ะลือวอลคัมที่ Discipleship Class 1 Lesson 7 Responsibilities of the Believer Let's open up in prayer Heavenly Father Thank you Lord for another opportunity to learn more about you God As we begin our session today Lord we pray that you be with us We pray Heavenly Father that you remove all distractions That you give us a heart of humility Lord That you help us to receive your word God Give us a spirit of discernment as we get started, Lord. We pray for your presence, for your blessing, Lord. I pray that you bless all those who are watching this now, Lord. Bless their families, God. Provide for their every need, Heavenly Father. May they feel your presence, your joy, your peace, God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So we have gone over your privileges your blessings and your rights as a child of God. We have also discussed who you are, what you have, and the things you can accomplish through Christ. Today we're going to talk about what your responsibilities are as a believer. God gives us many blessings and there's a saying that says, God blesses you to be a blessing to others. In scripture, it goes more like, to whom much is given, much is required. God gives you blessings and it's our responsibility to understand what those blessings are so we can serve our local church. Responsibility number one, support your local church. The day God plants you in a church, you should support your new family in Christ with your resources, services, talents, abilities, and prayer. Many times we go to our pastors and we ask them to pray for our families, our friends, our needs, which is great because they're there as our spiritual covering. However, it's equally important that we pray for them, that they may not fall into temptation. One prayer that is super important is that we ask God to anoint our pastors with fresh word for the congregation. Responsibility number two, tithes and offering. What are tithes? Tithes are 10% of all your income. An offering is anything additional after that. So in the beginning, I felt really leery of this one. And most people get really defensive. Like, I'm not going to give 10% of my income. <laughs> I, used to, I used to envision like me rolling around in a bucket while the pastor was like in a Mercedes Benz, you know, living it up. Um, but let's see what the Word of God has to say in regards to this. Let's turn to the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse, verses 8 through 10. Malachi, chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. It says, Will a man rob God, yet you are robbing me? You ask, How do we rob you? by not making the payments of the tenth and the contributions. You are suffering under a curse, yet you, the whole nation, are still robbing me. Bring the full tenth into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me in this way, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. So scripture tells us, God tells us to give a tenth of our offering. I have learned, and my husband definitely had a lot to do with this, that giving a tenth of your income is a true test of where your heart is. I used to worry a lot about what that money would go to. And my husband said to me, it's not for us to worry so much about what the pastor does. It's for us to be obedient to God. And whatever the pastor does with that money, he God will hold him accountable. He will have to answer to God for it. Um, I also wanna, I have learned and, and I wanna bring to 
everyone's attention that is watching this that it costs money to run a church. It costs money to have the light on, to have, you know, electricity, well, same thing, electricity, gas on. Um, anytime there's an event or there's free food, free food, uh, all of that costs money. Any, any, uh, like my, our church has a food bank that takes a certain amount of money. There's also missions that takes a certain amount of money. There's evangelist groups that go out that takes a certain amount of money. And you ask like, where does this money come from, right? The nice thing about where I go to church is that every year they do a breakdown of the money that the church receives and where that money goes. So more than anything, it's a matter of your heart. Where is your heart at when it comes to that? Because God tells you that you won't lack anything. That he will bless you if you give your 10%. And I can testify that that has been true in my life. Responsibility number three, serve in church. God has blessed you with gifts, talents, and abilities that you can use to serve your brothers and sisters in Christ. God expects you to take initiative and serve in any department or ministry in your church. Why should you serve God? Because you're thankful for all that he has done. Let's turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us hold on to grace. By it, we may serve God acceptably with reverence and awe. And 29 says, for our God is a consuming fire. There are many areas that you can serve in the church. And in this particular situation, God will put it in your heart. So um, for me, the first area that I served in was as an usher. And I did this out of the necessity in the church. And I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed greeting people as they come in. Um, but the one area that God called me to serve in was Sunday school for the kids. So God speaks to us through many different avenues. He can speak to us through dreams, through other people, through prayer, uh, while you're reading the word of God. And so this one particular day, I had a dream that there was this apple tree and it was next to running water, like living water. It was a river. And I had no idea what that dream meant. But I shared it with my mom because the dream seemed a little different. It seemed like, like it was symbolic and spiritual. Well, my mom turned it on and she shared it with another sister in church. And that sister told my mom, Oh, your daughter is a teacher. That dream means that she's a teacher. And so a few weeks later, the pastor's wife comes to me and asks if I would be interested in teaching Sunday school for the kids. And so I said to her, let me pray about it and I'll get back to you. She said, okay, fair enough. I literally turn around, take like maybe two, three steps away from her. And in my spirit, I feel God say to me, yes that is where i want you and i was like that was fast <laughs> but you know the day continued and it was nighttime i was getting ready to say my prayers before i went to sleep and i said god i i feel like you've already answered this question but i really i would like confirmation would you like me to and before i even finished my sentence i received yes that is where i want you 
I was like, okay. <laughs> so I arranged things or I, I should say the pastor's wife arranged things so I can meet with her and she can show me around. And the classroom now where my kids are, my Sunday school kids are, in the back, there was a tree <laughs> with the river flowing next to it. This is like a, a big old image that they have in the classroom. And on the tree were apples and each apple was a name of a, a student. So God was definitely speaking and saying, this is where I want you. And I do believe that we all have areas where God wants us to work. Um, for some, it may be in the area of worship. Others teaching adults discipleship, like what I'm doing now. Ushering. There's a men's group, a woman's group. There's missions. Um, they do evangelist events. Um, what else? I mean, there's different areas. They do food banks. They have programs in high schools for teenagers. There's so many areas that you can serve and be a blessing. So in this area, I would say, pray and ask God for guidance where you should go and wherever God puts you, you're, you're gonna feel this joy in your heart. So uh, when it came to me, I, was, I went with the students, I kind of tried it out and I was like, oh, okay. But the thing about me serving in Sunday school is sometimes my days would be really long because I would do the English service in the morning and I'm a Sunday school teacher for the Spanish service. So then right after the English service, I would go over to the Spanish service. That started at 3.30 and by the time I got home, it was like, I don't know, 6.30, 7 o'clock, sometimes 7.30. And so there were times where I would feel in my mind like oh this is such a long day but as soon as I would see the kids there was this joy in my heart and they would feel that same joy and it, it was God like you can feel his presence and it was an incredible amazing feeling it is a joy and an honor to serve God so I, I really pray and hope that this is something that you may find that joy in doing well, this concludes our lesson for today. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, for being with us, for teaching us our responsibilities in the church. I pray for every single person that's watching this, Lord. Guide them, Heavenly Father. Show them the areas that you want them to work in, Lord. May they understand more and more who they are in you, Lord, why you created them, what their purpose is in life, Lord. May, their, may the desires of their heart align with your will. And we just thank you, Lord. We, we give you all the glory and all the praise and everything that we do, Heavenly Father, is out of our gratitude for what you have done for us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I'll see you guys next week. Love you guys.